back to QB mapping. This time we're going to be adding a doorway to our room and connect it to another room, which will most probably be just a copy of this one. Now the first thing I want to say is that you can once you create a model, for example this room, you can save it for model local save as and let's save it somewhere in your own folder, but for me I'm going to save it under models, architecture, create a new folder, trial room example, and name it as main room. Zero one, and now it's saved. And even though, and you can use it in other levels. For example, if I start a new world, add a simple model, I can select that room, and I can reuse this instance of this model in as many worlds as I like. This reminds me that I should, I should probably save this world as well because if the editor crashes, I will lose all of it. So let's save it as a room example. And I'm going to include this map, like I said, but still not really finished. Okay, to continue adding the doorway, let's add it on the smaller polygon on this side, because then we can use the larger space over here to create some sort of interesting interior design. There are quite a few ways to approach adding a hole in a polygon, but probably the most simple one would be using the knife, knife tool, but access it by add knife and the shortest list is the K key. And how this works is simply use simply drag and I said key knife, not the light configuration. There you go. And how this works is simply drag and drop on one of the top down views, num zero to activate the quarter view mode. And then simply drag and drop a incision line and then position it using the crayon circle to move the entire thing. Or you can move the two-dimensional plane if you move one of the spot points that define it. But for simple sake, let's use a straight line and position it somewhere here. And then simply press press enter and use K again, move your line and press it on the other side. But keep in mind that this only cuts the polygons that you have selected. So now, right now, if I move this one, you will notice that there is no polygon down here, and the player will power through it. But since I'm going to use a extrusion method, I won't really have to worry about creating welds to the floor polygon, and in my case, that would be just usually adding unnecessary geometry. There we go. Now to actually create a room, we can use extrude key or control shift and E and simply modify one of these with these values to like negative in my case it's negative Z because I'm extruding in the Z axis and use like negative 2 or let's say 3 then delete the wall polygon and flip the resulting room once shift and F key is used to flip the polygons but you can also use the modify, let's see if I can find it, flip polygons. There we go, same thing. And now all I have to do is recreate the floor and ceiling polygon maps and fix the UV mapping on the walls. Right, don't fit type map. I forgot what I'm doing myself. There. And for the floor, I'm going to select both the floor and the new polygon and use planner fit U. Rotate it and adjust the polygon size again. And as you can notice, there is no seam between my new room polygon and the old one because the texture space overlaps perfectly. So if I overlay the texture, as you can see, if I use none and then select one of these, which is usually my last use, is usually a history of the last textures used. You will notice that the texture well, is continuous seamlessly on the UV space and it's just projected seamlessly in 3D space. And let's play test this again.
like so. And now sign again for the ceiling, use planar UV. The problem if you use normal down switch is that both of these polygons are going to get random positions. In most, in most cases, but I guess by random chance to diminish my world, the editor decided to fit them perfectly here, but the normal case is that the polygons will have no... will have seams, not quite noticeable seams between them. But I already said out for that. Let's find where our sealed floor polygons are. We can actually create both of these at the same time. Stretch them out. Play test again to make sure that the scale is acceptable, as if we're not in some gigantic room. And there we go. Usually, creating new room segments is a hassle, but you will eventually get the hang of it. We can now delete this polygon and uh, continue to creating the corridor room that will connect this one and another one. Okay, now that we have the room set and the doorway extruded, let's delete this polygon so that now when the player is in the room, they can easily exit it and continue to other models. To actually create another one, let's add another simple model and position it somewhere here. Negative 0x, 0x, 0y, and negative 16z. And we do this because I'm going to eventually instance this room and simply co copy paste it on this side. And then use a corridor to connect both of them. And thus saving myself a lot of work to create, in creating a, another room. And I should actually place this polygon, this corridor, in between them, somewhere here. And now simply go and create another box. Position it at 4, box at 2. Adjust the sizes. I can use the, the handler arrows on the sides to simply drag and drop the box size instead of using the parametrical sort of input of, of dimensions of the box. But I can eventually, but I will eventually use this to average out my numbers, to flow them down so that I won't get any C errors. So in this case I have a 25.8 and I assume that that would be normally 20, 26. And reposition the box center to be at the exact model center. Like so. And then simply flip, flip the polygons and drop it. Now I'm going to use the knife tool again. Simply create a cut for both rooms. Delete these polygons, and voila, the corridor is complete. Now, a very simple way to copy paste the materials we used in other rooms is to create a shared material, aka press on the logo here and you and share it. And now for our second corridor model do the same thing we did for the room, aka create a floor, polygon map, and a ceiling one. And now simply use copy-paste to copy-paste the polygon maps from the rooms to the other model, and in a way that they will be shared, and I will show you what that means after, I'm, after I copy-paste them. So simply, you simply highlight it, and use Ctrl plus C to copy it, Control plus C to paste it and repeat the process until all the polygon maps are successfully transferred over. Now let's create the polygon rooms. A very easy way to go to vertex maps, polygon maps, and select the default one. And then from maps, use select by map. And this will select all the polygons that have this map applied to them. And the shortcut for selecting my map is Control Shift plus non plus. As you can see. Now use the and now we'll just create the normal for them. 
select the floor one. Planner, flip both. By now you should probably know what I'm doing, so I'm just skipping through this. No reason to re-explain what I did in the first installments. Select the ceiling polygon map. Select all the polygons that have it. And I'm now increasing it so that it will fit the size of the polygon maps one. As you can see, these on here are so the actual lower polygons. Like so. And the, when the, now to go back to the shared part, you will notice that since this, the material of this room, the corridor and the other one are all shared, well the material on this room and this room were already shared because of the same model, but the corridor is a different model, and even so, the materials are still shared because I selected the shared property, and then copy-pasted them. And what this means is, if I make a change to the material on one model, is going to apply to the materials on any other model that has the shared material are also in use. So this is a good, good way to what the hell that is. Anyhow, so this is a good way to create a easily modifiable set of models. So that if I decide to change the texture, I won't have to go to every single model and manually change it. Let's also save this model as Main, main and here we go. Next up, adding windows. Adding windows. By this time, you guys should probably be able to figure this out on your own, but let's just continue with the tutorial. There is a very simple tool for this. You can use the inner shift to extrude the to create an internal polygon of a polygon or a set of polygons that you have already selected. But the inner shift tool will scroll up your UV map. So there is a workaround. If you use the bevel tool and use the offset, I mean inset, you will create virtually the same effect, but the UV map will be preserved. And I'm not really sure why one tool screws up and the other tool that does the, the same thing doesn't. But that's called the info you. The bevel tool also allows you to create a offset at the same time. So for example if I wanted to create a and yeah here we go. I want to create a offset of 0 0.5 and one of 0 0.5 and create a 45 degree edge. The bevel tool is, is a very useful way to do that. But since I don't want since I don't want to bevel this and my UV map will anyway get screwed up when I modify this polygon. I'm just going to go with inner shift and just use any random value. Now I'm going to proceed on to manually modifying the, the width of my window polygon. Extend it a bit to the ceiling. And use vertex mode to move only the, the bottom edges of the window polygon. So that I'll get a more realistic sort of window. And then again, just extrude it. Another way to mention is that if you use the bevel tool, you also won't get the error in normals. You'll get with the normal sh with the extrude tool. And also you can use normal shift which also has an offset and doesn't give you errors in, well, normals or the facing of the polygons. The subtle difference between all, all these tools is that the extrude tool can be used in combination of multiple polygons. So for example, if I have these tools selected and I extrude them, like so, you will notice that the resulting extrusion is already connected these polygons are welded. But whereas if I use normal shift, the offset is applied to both polygons. And I think that you might be able to get it to create a combination. 
what I get, what I guess not. I haven't really experimented with this too a lot. I'm just mentioning the differences between extrusion in inner shift, normal shift, and bevel. Bevel pretty much does the same thing. It applies to each polygon individually. So the best way to create a multiple extrusion would be to use the extrude tool. Like so. Anyhow, back to creating a window. I don't, I'm just going to use the bevel this time for, a while, for just the difference in tools. And delete my window facing polygon. And now you can notice that the resulting UV map has been completely damaged. And we can easily fix this, this time by not using the normal, although this seems to work pretty fine. Yeah, actually this works pretty well too, but you can ask here, but you can also use planner, projection, and fit one of the smaller axes. And then manually stretch the resulting polygon to fit the ones of the walls. Like for example, now that these polygons here, from here to here are the wall polygons. And if I select these ones again, and stretch them to fit, the texture ratio will be almost exactly similar. And it's usually a better way, because you don't get a mess of polygons, because you get well, you can notice that you get this really nice polygon, single polygon. Well, not a single, but a single island of polygons. Whereas if I use the normal don't fit, I get this mess. And on larger models, this would make it harder to organize your UV map. So for a more complex matters like this, I will go with planar UV for the edge ones. I'm going to cheat and just use normal again. Flip these ones to get a better connection. And uh, we have a window. For the instance draw, I can use the stretch value to mirror this around the one of these, around the y x axis, so that the window will be on the parallel side. And now I have two rows with the window. If I enter playtest mode, you will see that I can easily run around and even drop out the window if I wanted to. Whee!